Hello everyone, GaffMath974 here again today. Welcome to another Valve source code tutorial. This time around I'm going to demonstrate how you can be in a position to compile shaders for the source engine. Now this is going to be kind of complicated, especially the next video which is going to go over how to implement a parallax corrected cube map, which has its own problems which I'll get into in that video. Um, but to be able to actually compile shaders you need to do some preamble stuff which is going to be this video so without further ado let's just get straight into the video so i'm going to go into the option where you download and install a programming language called perl and the DirectX sdk so for the first part you want to download something called strawberry perl now this is for windows and it's, as I said, a programming language. It's fairly easy to just install. I'll leave a link to Strawberry Pearl in the description of the video. And once you've installed that, keep an eye on where it actually installs to, because that'll be useful for later. And you want to navigate to your start menu, Strawberry Pearl under S, and expand it out and go to the CPAN client. It should load up a command prompt and you just want to type in install string colon colon crc32 uh, this is one of the Perl packages that the you know shader compilation needs so the strawberry pearl is like the easiest way to get this needed um, package so once you've done that uh, i'll leave a download link to the next thing which is the november 2008 directx sdk I know that goes back quite a bit, but um, on the guide for shader authoring, the links to the DirectX SDK don't work. So I'll leave an internet archive link in the description so you can download this. And I know it's 2021 and we're downloading something from 20, 2008. So, you know, it, it goes all the way back that far, but um, apparently newer versions of the DirectX SDK don't include needed executable files so we just have to settle with old stuff and of course the source code was last updated like 2013 so again old stuff right but um again keep an eye on where you actually install the november 2008 directx sdk2 and essentially what we want to do after this once you have them both downloaded and installed is you want to go to this pc uh, right click and go to properties and then off onto the left you should see advanced system properties and what you want to do is make sure that um, it loads up a window which is the in an, in an advanced tab and then click on environment variables and essentially you want to make sure that the strawberry pearl bin folders are included um, and then you need to manually add in the DirectX SDK um, need, you know necessary stuff so it's going to be where you install that to then you want to go to utilities bin x86 so from my experience the strawberry pearl bin folders are already there so just make sure all of those are actually uh you know listed properly and then make sure that this directx sdk file um, folder is actually included as well um, save that, apply it, and restart your system. And then what you want to do is navigate to where you installed your source code. So in my case, it's going to be uh, SP, SRC, Material System, STD Shaders. And then you want to go to build SDK shaders.bat and edit it. And around line 7, because we're using Visual Studio 2013, we actually want to change um, line 7 to be VS120. So that's an important change that needs to be made. Uh, and then you can save that and create of it. And then if, it depends on if you're dealing with the Half-Life 2 code or the episodic code. In my case, I deal with the Half-Life 2 code. So you're going to right click build hl2shaders.bat and edit that. And then you need to change the game DIR and the SDK bin DIR directories. Um, to the appropriate directories, making sure they adhere to the 8.3 file directory format. Now, what the hell does that mean? So, the way you do this is, if you go into Notepad, you want to type in at echo off 
and on the next line type in echo percent tilde s1 so yeah just copy what you see on the screen and what you want to do is go save as um, make sure it's all files not a text document save it somewhere on your system and I call it short file path cmd and then what you want to do is actually go to the command prompt um, navigate to where you save that command file to uh, load it up by just typing in short file path and then in speech marks you want to paste in the directory that is where your game dir and your sdk bin dir is located now in my case because this is on a drive that's not the c drive it doesn't seem to work properly so from my experience it only works on the c drive so with that being said and done it's probably fair to suggest that if your source code or your source SDK, SDK based 2013 single player or multiplayer, whichever one you're using, is not installed on the C drive, then what you want to do is make a mock up of these directories on the C drive and just copy and paste all the stuff that is in that directory over onto the C drive and then put the actual directory into this command prompt and it basically condenses it down to something that is going to be read fairly easily so one of the problems i had with the uncompressed uh, directory is it says oh it's trying to go to steam steam apps common source but you can't go anywhere from there but it's actually supposed to go to the source stk base 2013 single player but it's not finding it because of a space bar included in the source stk base 2013 single player folder name so you need to use this and so, as I said, it's probably for the best if you actually have all this stuff on the C drive in the first place. But, you know, if you don't, then make sure you just uh, copy the fundamental stuff. So the Source SDK 2013 single player bin stuff, just copy that to the C drive into a comparable directory name. And then your mod HL2 or mod episodic folder in your SP or MP game folder. Um, then put that onto the C drive as well. Copy the names of those, those directories into this short file path, get a compressed version of the directory name, and then put that into your game DIR and SDK bin DIR. So it should look like what I show in the video. And with that being said and done, I know I've kind of gone on off the rails at the end there, but it's stuff that I do need to explain. But with that being said and done, you should be in a position to compile shaders uh, i don't think there's anything else i need to include at this stage though one of the things that i do need to mention is that the next video is going to be how to code the parallax corrected cube map shader and so as i said that has its own problems which i'll cover at that point and uh yeah i think that is going to be everything that i need to cover at least for now I hope you enjoyed watching the video and hopefully, fingers crossed, you can follow this guide and be in a position to compile shaders for yourself. Um, so yeah, hopefully you find this helpful and I'll see you for the next tutorial, which is going to be implementing the Parallax Corrected Cube Map. So thank you for watching and I'll see you for that.